Uhuru Kenyatta and his deputy William Ruto will formally begin their second term in office after the inauguration ceremony tomorrow. The first term of Jubilee has been lukewarm, to say the least. The regime has been branded the worst or the best Kenya has had, depending on who you ask. And even as Uhuru begins his second and final term, the opposition is deeply convinced that he was illegitimately elected on October 26th and have promised no peace for his government. So what hurdles will Uhuru and Ruto be seeking to overcome or what success will they be seeking to strengthen in the next five years? In studio, I have legislators Dan Manzo, who's the member of parliament for the Makueni constituency. Thank you very much for joining us, as well as Irungu Kangata, the senator for Muranga County. Thank you very much for joining us here on News Center. I would want to start with uh, you, being from the Jubilee government, uh, you, um, Jubilee party, um, uh, you, most of you has, have stated categorically that you will go on with the ceremony, you will go on to form government and uh, to be in power for the next five years. How are you planning on doing this with all the hurdles on the way from the opposition and a country that is definitely not united? One, uh, I don't see any hurdle in respect to tomorrow's event. Tomorrow's event will proceed. It provided for under the law. Uh, any other uh, meeting that is not founded in any law uh, cannot stop that meeting that is clearly provided for under the law. So therefore, in respect for tomorrow, I foresee a very successful meeting. And therefore, I urge anyone who is watching us, please, tomorrow join us at Kasarani to be a very good event, to be a very peaceful event. In respect going forward, in terms of divisions, yes, I agree. We do have uh, divisions. Uh, there are several probable solutions to those divisions. Number one, I would pray the people are bringing division in this country to retire from politics, in particular Ray Laudinga. If, we, if Ray Laudinga was to exit, he's an old man. He has done his part. He gives younger people an opportunity to serve in, uh, in the opposition. Maybe that can assist. Are you saying that most of the political problems in the country currently are because of Ray Laudinga? Yes, there's no doubt about it. You can see, for instance, when Raila Odinga was not in the country, it was a very peaceful period, but immediately he came to Kenya, there was a lot of chaos. You can see over the years from 2007, 2012, he has always been the face of violent opposition. At any one time he is vying, there is always chaos. I would have thought maybe as of now, Raila Odinga could have even uh, given this, my friend here, an opportunity to become the flag bearer for the opposition. He has refused. To me, in fact, Raila is like a Mugabe reincarnate for our... So let me our, get this our, straight. If Raila Odinga exits the political space, Kenyans will be united? Yes, I foresee that from where I see it. Because you'll see people who are quite pragmatic, people who can be able to build bridges, people who can be able to sit down and discuss. But as long as it's in politics, I foresee danger. I don't know, maybe we need uh, probably to uh, change the constitution to provide that uh, once you reach, let's say, at the age of 70, you go home. This idea of you are 70 plus, you still want to become the president, I think we should start that discussion. I think it doesn't make any sense. So therefore, he is one of the cause of division. Mm -hmm. Number two, uh, I think I foresee a situation where Kenya will start a dialogue as to effectiveness of this constitution to foster unity in an ethnically divided society. From where I sit, I doubt as to where this constitution is sufficient to foster unity. All right. Dan Manzo, he said a lot of things. One, yes, Raila yes. Odinga needs to exit the political space. Two, um, the constitution is lacking in terms of fostering unity in a country that is disintegrated like this one of ours. Your thoughts? First, I want to disagree with him. If it was not for Raila Odinga, Kenyans would be living in slavery up to today. In fact, uh, I think uh, this would be the time President Moy will be exiting, just as like Mugambe, if Raila was never born. So Raila has changed Kenya, and uh, our government has to be checked properly. And I can assure you, he won the election in 2007, he won the election in 2013, he won the election in 2017. It's only that uh, the government systems which have been there ensured that the vote was stolen, 
There is nothing to be proud of a, a stolen election. I have um, been in the election petitions and uh, there is overwhelming evidence, including the 26th one. It's all that the, ju the judges had very little choice to make because without uh, changing IBC and the certain thieves who we know, there was no way, uh, there, there was no need, you know, to keep on, um, uh, you know, nullifying elections because for eternity, unless you change the IBC, you can't change much. So I want to tell uh, my friend, the Honorable Rungu Kangata, now a senator, who is also a lawyer, that without an active opposition, uh, the government would not be checked. All the scandals we unearthed would have been would have gone quiet, and the government has to be checked properly. So if there is somebody you should be thanking in Kenya, is the Honorable Raila Odinga. Uh, you remember he said force in 202, which a lot of you are thankless about. Uh, and I believe he's willing to, you know, to, to make Kenya better, uh, so long as justice is done. Uh, you remember what the government has done recently? Uh, they've been killing people. In fact, it is genocide. Uh, but because they have survived the Hague before and they have survived the Supreme Court, I believe they can survive anything because of, um, uh, you know, misuse of power. So, so I wish what they talked yesterday in the church, and I wish that's how the two leaders would be every day. Then Kenya would be a peaceful place. But when they go before Bishop Gitonga, they talk this. Tomorrow, when they will not be before Bishop Gitonga, they will send Kome to kill Kenyans who will be mourning their dead. So whether they are red zones or no red zones, Jacaranda is not a red zone. Uh, we, we, NASA should be allowed to carry on its activities. Personally, I have, I have, I have good reasons uh, not to recognize President Uhuru's government because I have overwhelming evidence that the election was stolen. In Garissa, where he got 36, a three was added. It became a 336. Why will you be stealing 300 votes if you're really popular? You should, be, you should be telling your people, don't do it. He should be the first one to say, don't kill any demonstrator. Then all these people who have died of 100 or so uh, would not have died. And therefore, as much as you want to paint Raila Odinga as a, as a very bad man, and, and in fact, a lot of presidents in the, in the world are that age, even Trump, uh, they are mature enough to lead the nation. I believe that's what it should be. And of course, the constitution is clear. It is, uh, uh, it is uh, 10 years, and then one exits. And so long as, um, if the sort, the, the, the sort of constitutional amendments uh, Jubilee is thinking of is uh, capping the age limit, then I don't think we are likely to agree. But on the positive side, mm -hmm. uh, I look forward into there be dialogue between, between the two leaders, because without dialogue, all the other processes, we are going to begin to amend the constitution for a better Kenya are going to be an exercise in futility. Right. You um, uh, mentioned a few things, and of course, in response to what he says, um, NASA has consistently, consistently said that it is going to give uh, the Jubilee government hell, for lack of a better word. How are you planning on doing this? Of course, uh, the people's assembly is there. The sovereignty of the people they are purporting to be enjoy is a stolen sovereignty. So the people's sovereign power has never been properly exercised in Kenya for a long time. And so long as the sovereign power is stolen, then you don't have the real power. Mm -hmm. The real power is still with the people. Whatever they have is a stolen sovereignty. And up to the day there will be proper sovereignty, then will you have peace in Kenya? And we are saying, since the sovereignty has been stolen, we must have a process to restore the stolen sovereignty of the Republic of Kenya. It's nothing to be proud of to be a president whereby the sovereignty is stolen from the people. So the people are still sovereign and they are still powerful. The truth of the matter is, you saw, uh, President Uhuru Kenyatta has 7 million, Raila Odinga has 8.5 million. So who has the sovereignty of the people? But that's not the standing. We need to look at a Kenya whereby if, if you win an election with minority and the majority is outside there, uh, you, you need a situation to be able to appease. Uh, the, the other part of Kenyans. And even going forward in the future, uh, after 2022, Kenya will still be divided into two unless we amend this constitution. So, so we want consistency. Today, President Uru Kenyatta and his deputy say this. Tomorrow they say a different thing. Mm -hmm. The third day they are peaceful. The other day they say, okay, people, they, tell, they tell them they instruct police to kill people. Mm -hmm. Which way forward? We need a way where Kenya is peaceful. You cannot get peace without justice. Kenyans need justice first. We have now a terrorized judiciary intimidated judiciary, intimidated Kenyans. Mm -hmm. You can't cover it up forever. It will soon erupt. Mm -hmm. So then, in the next five years, as a, as a legislator from the Jubilee side, what really do you expect to see 
from the Jubilee Party, the hurdles being put uh, there notwithstanding? Well, uh, I foresee focus on economic uh, development. Uh, we have Vision 2030, which was uh, conceptualized by the former president, uh, Mwai Kibaki. That Vision 2030, as of now, ought to be implemented. And therefore, I foresee Uhuru Kenyatta and his deputy now focusing on development and ignoring uh, my colleagues here whose business is just politicking, politicking, politicking. But then ignoring them would be also ignoring the millions of people who follow NASA or who are supporters of NASA. How are you going to work around that? No, we will not ignore them in terms of development. If you, are, if you look at devolution, devolution, well, it's a legal concept. Money is spread all over, notwithstanding whether you support Uhuru or you don't support, so that we proceed to, in terms of, uh, let's say, other resources in the hands of the national government, there will be no discrimination. Uh, so it, when you talk of ignoring them, you mean a situation where when they want to form those barazas, when they want to talk, they talk. Kenya is a democracy. So they talk, but you don't have to keep on, uh, as a president, replying to them, that is not your work. So therefore, I foresee a president whose main focus is on doing his job. That is my opinion. Uh, as to the, the hurdles, I don't foresee them doing anything drastic. They have no capability. First, in parliament, they don't have numbers. In the Senate, they don't have numbers. In the county assemblies, they control very few county assemblies. We control a majority of the county assemblies. Well, so therefore, you, when, you, when you ask yourself what is their end game, we're using the various shenanigans they're employing. They have zero possible or plausible end game, which they can employ to derail government business. So therefore, uh, I don't see anything that is going to be put before the public government mm -hmm. is going to torpedo yeah. our agenda going forward. Manzo, it is said that um, uh, MPs have been asked to not participate in the vetting of cabinet secretaries because def yes. that's definitely going to be the agenda. Um, he says that uh, there's nothing really uh, gravious you would do in the corridors of, 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 of parliament. As a legislator, how are you going to use parliament to your advantage as NASA? First of all, you talked about devolution, and I want to say up to now, the counties have not received their money. As parliament, before we... Uh, dissolved to go for elections. We passed the budget. Um, they have frustrated all the governors. And in fact, there's, there's very little change from the old constitution to the new constitution. Devolution is just a concept. It has not been actualized. And uh, even the few monies which had gone to governors before, a lot of it was misused. The government did not invest, despite a lot of effort by ourselves, to reform the ESCC. Uh, the body fighting corruption. Mm -hmm. It has never been implemented. So they have concentrated on... Uh, I mean, is the government riddled with corruption? There's a lot of corruption going on. I re I'm very grateful to President Kibaki, who started the Vision 2030, and I was part of his government. He, was, he really had a foresight for this country. He did very well. He, he set uh, the country on a path of success, uh, such that even when you are bad presidents or people not very committed or a lot of corruption, still a little bit can be achieved. That's why you saw the, uh, you know, you saw the launching of uh, uh, the Thimba irrigation scheme. The, uh, there has been the signing ceremony of the Thwake uh, Athi Dam, whereby we're going to have water provided to Kitui, Machakos, and Makueni mainly. Uh, those are very good dreams, but the truth of the matter is the whole system is, uh, is, is riddled with co co corruption. It is not moving. It is uh, frustrating. The governors don't have their money for development. The roads have been washed. Kenyans are frustrated, and uh, the, the counties cannot repair the roads, nor does, can the national government repair the roads. CDF, which we approved a long time ago, has never been released. So for about eight months, uh, Kenya has been a standstill economically. So when they talk of economic improvement, I'm wondering which economy. Because the economy is dying every day. And if you want to improve an economy, you must set the mode right. You must set the attitude right. You must unite Kenyans. Instead of uniting Kenyans, they are killing Kenyans. Gome is there threatening Kenyans tomorrow. We are decent enough to know that we cannot disrupt a foreign president. He has no, I mean, he has not wronged us and is visiting the country. At the end of the day, you know Kenya is one. 
but you have to let the you don't suspend the constitution tomorrow simply because uh, you you are you have a swearing in ceremony which is very questionable and where many Kenyans don't support it for obvious reasons which are known to every Kenyan that you have frustrated everyone to an extent that they have to let you proceed be it the courts be it IBC be it the Kenyans but you are saying carry on with your program let us also carry on with our program don't bother with our program we will not bother with yours we don't recognize it, please respect that. It's in the Constitution. So it, at times they suspend the Constitution for their own gain, like the way they intend to suspend the Constitution tomorrow. So we know of the red zones. We don't want to bother them, but uh, Jacaranda is not a red zone. Let us go on with money. Uh, we've got over 36 uh, dead persons who have been killed by the police. You know, I, uh, I saw the police attack a member of parliament twice now, the member for Kadiani and the member for Madari. Both of them are hospitalized, attacked by the police at a close range. And, and you can see the president is not uh, asking for inquiries to be made or someone to be prosecuted. He's very happy with it, going for swearing in ceremony when he has, his forces have killed people. So, so we, we need a situation whereby we, we are for real and whatever we speak is real. When they talk of majority in the House, uh, and, uh, and I'm aware that there are a lot of election petitions going on uh, in the country, of course, uh, by the current mood, some of them will be lost just by the political climate, and uh, they may still retain majority. But it is a stolen majority. It is not a real majority. That's why we are not going to help them or critique any of the cabinet secretaries they want to hire. They can hire them is, uh, to, to go and advance the corruption practices. So you'll not be participating completely We'll not participate that. at all. We'll not question. As an, uh, because they don't need, the, according to them, they don't need an opposition. According to them, uh, Raila Odinga should retire. According to them, we should dissolve uh, all the, everybody should be in Jubilee. Our constitution is clear, there is majority and minority. Those you win, uh, by fair means or unfair means, have to be checked by those who remain. So, so they, they have to respect our right uh, not to, to want to question anybody. Mm -hmm. they, uh, they, because according to them, everybody else doesn't matter, only Jubilee matters. And therefore, we, we, we will not oppose anything mm -hmm. they want to pass in the house. I want us to go on a break, but quickly he says, Jubilee government, Jubilee party has zero respect for alternative views like the opposition. No, you can't say that. Eh? Number one, these people are being paid as we speak. By, they are by parliament, of course. If at all Jubilee government did not want them, he could have engineered that they are not paid, but they are being paid, but they are not offering their services for which they were elected by their constituents. Number two, uh, they are even being provided with various uh, facilities. Take, for instance, tomorrow's event. The reason why the Jacaranda meeting has been banned it is not because the government does not respect their right of assembly, no. It is because government will be focusing on the Kasarani event. That event is expected to draw about 100,000 participants. So many heads of uh, states will be attending that event, and therefore the entire security machinery will be employed there. So when you go to Jakaranda, you expect the government to provide you with security. You expect some facilities from the government. You are stretching the government too much. That's the whole rationale why the law says, no, 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 when you have a meeting, notify the police so that police makes various right. arrangements. I want us to so take the a short point break. Is, yes. I want us to take a, yes. Uh, we, 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 we love the opposition. We have no problem with the opposition. But uh, they just want to wreck. They want to cause hell in this country. That is why they are wrecking institutions. Yes, I want us to take a short break, but we'll be back with um, the question of the capacity for the police since that you're saying it will be a stretch for them. But, uh, and of course, uh, Dan Manzo will be reacting to that. Let's take a quick break here on uh, News Center.